Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to lesson number one of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Have you ever heard about Monstroid? Monstroid is basically WordPress on steroids. With this product, you can build easily everything from a single blog page to a gigantic e-commerce to sell your product online. Click on this video to learn more and access a 10% discount for Monstroid or whatever other theme you decided to purchase from the template monster repository. Before starting, we need to collect a bunch of files, we need to organize a bunch of things, and after that we can safely jump to code, but because we are building from scratch a premium theme, we have to follow some few steps to organize better our files and to know what to do properly with all the stuff uh, that we have to follow. So first of all, in order to follow this tutorial, you need to download this theme that I custom created. It's called Sunset Theme, and you can find the description, the video, and all the instruction to download this theme completely for free with all the files that you need in the description below or in this little video here, this little pop-up that is gonna appear on the top right of your screen. If you already have this file, great. It means that you're following me on Twitter and I'm super grateful for that, so thank you everyone. The second thing that you absolutely need is an active and running installation of WordPress with the latest version of WordPress. The current version is the 4.3.1 and I suggest you all to download this latest version because it has a lot of improvements, a lot of bug fixes and a lot of security holes have been fixed so be sure to have this clean installation of WordPress with no plugin install at all and no other themes other than the 2015 so no other code running around that we don't want to mess with we are gonna start creating something super cool from scratch so we don't want other stuff to clutter our code. As I said, before starting coding, I have to organize my files and have to be sure that I have all the source files that I need to create this amazing theme. So first of all, if you notice in the file, I used uh, sometimes some icons, like here we have a tag icon, here we have a comment icon, and also in the sidebar, as you notice, a lot, I used a lot of icons, a closing, a, magnifying glass, a pencil, picks, and whatever, all with the purpose of making a pretty theme. Instead of using these icons as images or as SVGs, PNGs, or whatever inside of our theme, I wanna create an icon font. Uh, an icon font is basically a collection of SVGs that we can use and convert into a font. So I can recall these SVGs a proper font so I can scale it infinitely without worrying like blurriness or pixelated icons or whatever. And I can manage all the aspect of a standard font. So color, background, uh, alignment, and all of these sorts of stuff that we cannot actually do it with a standard image. So what we have to do is we have to go inside our file and check inside all the folders for all these icons. Grab this icon, copy this icon, and paste it into another folder that I called icon set. In this icon set folder, I collected all the all the icons in one single line and I resized them all to match pretty much the same height and width. The important thing to create a custom font icon is to have all the icons um, with kinda the same size. If we manage to have all the icons with the same size, it's gonna be easier for us to manage multiple icons on the same section with just one single font size CSS attribute. Otherwise, uh, thing will be like pretty confusing. So be sure to have this. Anyway, if you don't wanna follow this, you can totally skip this part because you're gonna find all these files ready to be used inside the GitHub repository there. I'm gonna put the link inside the description below this video. Uh, but if you're interested in this process, please bear with me for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So to export this from Photoshop, you can select file by file or all together and export them, all of these icons as SVGs. The SVGs format is a vector format that gives us the ability to import 
this type of format inside an online application to generate a custom font icon. The online application that I want to use and I want to suggest you to use is iCommun. It's completely free and the, the amazing thing about it is you're not forced to log in or sign up or subscribe or whatever to use this library. It's all based on cache. So uh, as far as you don't delete your cache, all your custom icons and your custom projects are going to remain inside iCommun. But just go to iCommun.io, click on the iCommun app in the top right, and you're going to be in this section. I already created my custom project here called uh, sunset icon pack, but you can create your custom project with the name that you want. Load the project and by default, Icomoon is going to put like a couple of libraries. I deleted those libraries because I don't need it. So what I want to do is I want to import the icons that I created. Here is the full list of icons that I generated. As you notice, all are .svg and all these icons are vector icons that you can custom create or you can copy somewhere else and you can create your own library. But you can select all these icons together, click open, and in a matter of seconds, this is like totally in real time, uh, Icommon is going to convert all these SVG into a vector font size. So if we actually edit one icon, it's going to open pretty massive, it's pretty big, it's not like as big as we created the icon, but as you know, this is super crisp, it's super detailed, and it's not pixelated at all. So he created this font that we can use, and the even cooler thing is like, he can handle, the system can handle pretty complex sections. So here, you notice I have my sunset logo that is pretty complex with all these random shapes that are merging all together. It doesn't really matter for it because he created this icon and I can use this icon as a font and no worry about like coloring or not being able to stretch, resize. And also having a font icon is really, really useful for responsive design because we can resize things without worrying about quality loss. So now what we have to do, we have to select, click, check the select option and select all the icons that we want to export and click on the bottom rhyme here, generate font. Uh, the system is going to automatically generate a font with all the names of every single icon, every single font icon, exactly the same as the name of your file that you imported. So, of course, you can change the name, you can uh, customize the name, but if your, your file already has the proper name, you're not going to have to repeat this step of editing the name one by one. Before downloading a font, just click on the little gear icon here and we want to customize a little bit the option. We don't want to leave the font name as iCommun because it's the default. We want to customize completely this uh, experience, this theme. We want to create a premium theme completely customized. So I want to call this font name Sunset Icon and the prefix of my class. So all, every time I have a name of an icon, for example, audio or close, this class prefix is going to be applied before. So it's going to be icon dash audio, icon dash close. And I don't want to leave this icon because it's really generic. And it could happen that a user that uses our theme uh, can add his own custom font or another font icon. So I don't want to risk to have the same class prefix for my my phone icon with another phone icon. So let's create something completely custom and it's gonna be sunset. This is the class prefix. And the CSS selector, you have the option to use the attribute selector that in this case uh, would be the attribute icon or the I, that is the wrapper, the, the HTML wrapper around the font or the class. I always like to use a class because it gives me the ability to customize even the generic selector of this class. And I usually, to avoid confusion, I use the exact same font name as a class for my selector. Here, of course, you have the options to include metadata, support IE7, IE6, but 
we absolutely don't care. Uh, you can, if you create a pretty cool font, you can customize the metadata here, put your URL, your name. If you wanna put it as a copyright, you can do it. But this is completely, op it's up to you and we don't actually need it. I customize this option because it's like, technically it's better to do it like that. We have more control and we're sure that uh, we're gonna pretty much avoid or type of overriding or issues that could happen in the future. So now that we customize all the option, we can close this tab and download the font. And now inside our download folder, we have the zip file with all the icon and all the font icon automatically generated. So if we extract the folder, we will notice we have a fonts folder with our sunset icon, the four different version of the file that is necessary to use a font icon. So we have EOT, SVG, TTS, and WOFF as extension, and plus we have the style.css that if we open it, we're gonna notice that we have all the settings, all the classes, the prefix, the prefix, the wrapper container for our font family, our custom name, and all the icons that we generated with the relative CSS tag that we can use. And this is great. It took us like four minutes to do it and now we have a completely customized font icon that we can use however we want. After this, we can access our text editor. In my case, I'm using Coda by Panic. And before starting to create our custom theme, let's stay on the basic root, on the basic folder of our WordPress installation, and let's customize the wpconfig.php. Here we have all our options for database name, database user, and whatever. The, the part that I'm looking for is the define wp underscore debug. And this statement is on false by default. I want to change the statement, this global variable WP debug to through. The WP debug basically is saying to WordPress to, in a through statement, to print all the error, all the PHP error, PHP notice, PHP warnings that we're going to have during uh, the usage of our website. By default, of, of course, is on false because we don't want a user or um, a client to see these errors. But because right now we are developing a new theme completely from scratch, we are gonna for sure do a lot of mistakes and we need to keep track and we need to know if we are gonna, if we are doing something wrong. So with the through statement, we are gonna activate the WordPress debugging mode. And every time we do something wrong, WordPress is gonna trigger the full PHP error with the indication of what we did wrong. So now we are pretty ready to go. Remember to save this file and close it. Now we can access the folder, the WP content and the themes folder. In here, create a new folder called sunset-theme or whatever name you want to give to your theme. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that it has to be a unique name, something that doesn't exist. And if you can do a small research before creating a custom theme, you will avoid to name your theme with a name that already exists for another theme. So be sure to use a unique name, all lowercase without any blank space. And if you wanna separate words, you can use a dash, but you can always write everything attached. Sunset theme, it doesn't really matter. In my case, I wanna put a dash because I have two T's, one close to another, so I, I don't really like, it's just a visual thing. Let's access this folder and let's start creating our folder structure. I already know my folder structure and you should know also your folder structure before starting developing a theme. You should write down on a piece of paper all the files that you wanna, you wanna use and all the configuration that you wanna maintain. In my case, I'm gonna use a pretty standard configuration. So I want a folder called CSS for all my style sheet. I want a folder called JS for all my JavaScript. I want a folder called template parts 
for all the parts that are not related to the standard st structure folder, but we're gonna see how we're gonna use this folder in the future lessons. And I wanna use another folder called ink, where I'm gonna put all the functions, all the different files that handle different functions to avoid to clutter my file functions.php. I wanna now create also another folder called SAS because I wanna use SAS to develop this project, this custom theme. If you know nothing about SAS, I suggest you to check the Alicat Crash Course that is a super quick uh, tutorial about SAS and you're gonna be pretty much in uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, ready to go and ready to rock with SAS. If you want, you can find the link in the description below, or you can check in this uh, little pop-up icon that appeared here on the top right of your screen. Now that we have the folder structure, we can start putting our file inside here. So inside CSS, I wanna create another folder called fonts, because here I'm gonna put all the fonts. The first font that I know that I already have is the sunset fonts icon that I generated. So let's copy this. Let's open this folder. And let's paste it in here. Now we have to create the standard file that a uh, custom theme, I think for WordPress needs to be properly activated. So uh, we need to create the header dot PHP. We need to create uh, index.php and we need to create the footer.php. And now to define all the options and the name, the description of the editor, we have to create another file called style.css. Be aware that we are not gonna use this file to put our CSS style in here. We're gonna use SAS and automatically SAS is gonna generate an output CSS inside our CSS folder that is gonna be probably called sunset.css. But WordPress needs absolutely the style.css file in the root folder of your theme. So even if you're not using this file to style your theme, you need the file to be there in that location and be called style.css. Don't change the name of this file or WordPress is not gonna recognize it. And in here we can start uh, writing the standard information that a WordPress theme needs. So the first one is theme name and the theme is some theme that we like it a lot. The theme, you can specify the theme, theme URI. And here my theme is HTTP column forward slash forward slash alicat.com slash sunset theme author alicat author URI is the same address, but we know the final part. Description here, especially if you want to sell this theme or if you want to share it on the WordPress theme repository, you have to write a proper compelling description. So something that could be interesting for uh, the user that has to pick your font. So let's write something, something like that. It's pretty catchy, it's pretty cool, right? or maybe not, especially if we don't write things properly, administration, I don't know how to write anymore. Definitive ally for your daily blog. Perfect, okay, now we have to specify the version and is the version 1.0.0. During development, sometimes you could write 0.0.0 to alpha or wherever you're like completely free and the more you go the more this number raised but by default i know that i'm not gonna release this theme until until it's complete so let's just start with the uh, version one and we're gonna go with that license because i want to release this theme i don't want to sell it i want to release for free i want to use a gpl license that is the standard new general public license 
version 2 or later. Probably this is a version 3, but I'm not sure. The version 2 is the most common one, so always use this one and specify later because if they updated the version 2 with another version, you're gonna be good to go. License URI. We have to specify, especially if we specify a, a specific license, we have to specify the actual URI of this license. And this is the URI that you can put, like new.arc slash licenses slash GPL dash 2.0 point HTML. It's pretty standard. And the last parameter I want to put is tags. Tags are useful for the research inside the WordPress theme repository. So let's put blog, sidebar, responsive, clean, minimal, icon font, uh, something else, sunset. Maybe if a user searches sunset, it's gonna find our theme. Custom admin options. And uh, pretty much that's it. We can always extend this list if we find some other cool tags that we wanna implement, but for now we're pretty good to go. So by default, before activating, I want to create also a nice preview for my theme. So I have to generate a PNG with a 1200 per 900 pixel screenshot of my theme. I already created this picture and as usual, you can find the source file in the updated GitHub repo. If you decide to create a um, future uh, screenshot image from scratch by yourself, be sure to name this file always screenshot.png, otherwise the system WordPress will not be able to detect your screenshot file and will not be able to grab it and use it in the preview of your theme. So now, just because I wanna activate this theme, even if it's completely empty, uh, we have to implement a, a bunch of standard WordPress functions and hooks here. The first function that I wanna activate inside the header.php is wp underscore head with no declaration, no variables, no attribute. Another file that I wanna open is the footer.php and the same, pretty much the same thing, but of course we, the same name as the file, the wp underscore footer with no variable passed. And inside the index here, the two PHP tags as usual and the two functions called get header with no string name attached and the second PHP tag get footer and that's it. Let's access our WordPress installation. Let's access our dashboard, reload our dashboard. Let's go to appearance themes and let's check in the list of themes. We have our sunset theme with update available. What the hell it's happening? Why is it update? There is an update version 155 details. Sunset theme, or we have a sunset theme. <laughs> I can't believe it. This theme hasn't been updated in over two years. This is madness. So WordPress is uh, recognizing this theme with the same name. So what we have to do, we have to unfortunately change this name to avoid conflicts. What did I say about checking if your theme already exists in the repository? Yes, I did it. And I didn't find this stupid sunset theme, but okay. Let's go back in our text editor. Let's access the root uh, folder called themes where our theme is. And let's just remove the dash because WordPress is detecting that this sunset theme already exists. So uh, WordPress checks the availability of a theme or like the legit name of a theme based on the folder of the name folder. So I could call this just simply sunset or just remove the dash sunset theme. After we do that, we can access our installation, reload the appearance page, and you will notice that the update is, the update alert, it's gone. It means that this sunset theme, the folder I call sunset theme without any dash, doesn't exist. And we're pretty good to release it. If we wanna, we can also customize more the theme name and put Ale Cad 
sunset theme just because we already have a sunset theme inside the WordPress repository for themes. So having a slightly different name is maybe better, more recognizable for your theme. So let's access here, let's refresh, let's check the theme details. And now we have Alicat, sunset theme, we have our future image. And if we resize the screen, you will notice that WordPress is fully responsive also in the administration panel. So always be sure to follow the guidelines of the screenshot, otherwise you're gonna end up, especially on big screen, with a super blurry image that is not really good, especially if you're trying to sell your theme and to create a premium experience. Having a blurry preview is just terrible for your image. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. This was a quick introduction to on how to create the first standard structure of our theme. We created all the basic folders that we're gonna populate with our custom files. We create the first few files necessary, absolutely necessary to activate and a legit theme for WordPress. And in the next lesson, we're gonna start banging our head on this awesome code and we're gonna start creating amazing things. So I hope you enjoy, I hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you have questions, doubts, or you didn't understand something, uh, just leave a comment below. I will try to answer everyone. If you wanna follow a more uh, basic series of tutorial, be sure to check the WordPress 101 for beginner developers. And if you don't know anything about SAS, something that we're gonna use inside this project, be sure to check Alicat Crash Course to learn SAS in five minutes or even less if you're smarter than me and you probably are. So thank you again, guys. And until next video, as usual, happy coding.